Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now as you know, I am more than happy to field questions from viewers who have maybe a conundrum on their journey to Chap Nirvana. They, they want to know something about etiquette, about lifestyle, about just dressing in general. And by all means, if you wish to pose me a question, drop one in via email. I'd love to hear from you. As I have received such a question today from Sebastian. Now, Sebastian asked a question about how to fit in. And I will read you his words. He says, as someone who enjoys dressing sharp and taking pride in menswear, how can I balance my style with friends who usually dress much more casually? I sometimes feel overdressed when we hang out and I don't want to make it seem like I'm trying too hard. How can I maintain my sense of style while fitting in better with my mates? At the same time, because I dress so well, a lot of my friends tend to ask me for advice on what they should wear, especially since I'm the one who's dressed up a little bit more. While I'd love to introduce them to menswear, I don't like people I don't like to tell people what to wear or come across as rather pushy. How can I help guide them towards dressing better without overstepping or making them feel uncomfortable? Well, two points to your question there. Firstly, about fitting in yourself. And secondly, about steering your friends, maybe to that chap nirvana journey that we're all on. And balancing your sharp sense of style with a more casual group of friends whilst maintaining your style and your sense of authenticity, it's a tough road to navigate, but I believe it can be done. I've been there myself throughout the course of my adult life. I've been you many times, and I'm gonna give you some advice today that I think you can employ to help feel more comfortable yourself and help those around you perhaps dress a little better. Now, the first thing you've said is perhaps you wanna fit in a little better yourself. And one of the ways you can do that is by a little bit of subtle dressing down yourself. Now, you can absolutely maintain your own sartorial standards, but at the same time, you can incorporate more casual elements to your dress style without diminishing from your super sharp look. And that can be easily done. I mean, I've said this many times, it's like having a volume uh, lever or button on your, your style choices. You know, you turn it right down, you get very casual, you turn it right up, you get very formal. You can blend that in a little bit just to fit in with your group of perhaps more casual dressing friends. And it's not that difficult. Just think about every element of your clothing and alter that style volume. So think about your footwear, for instance. This is often the foundation of a man's outfit. It's important to set the tone with your footwear for the rest of your outfit. So for me, you know, if all your friends are wearing sneakers or training shoes, that doesn't mean that you have to follow suit. You know, you could, of course, go for these more um, sort of formal looking sneakers that people are wearing increasingly these days or sneakers of a more formal color, such as a brown sneaker. But for me, if you're a habitual dress shoe wearer, maybe you're an Oxford wearer, all I do is turn the volume down a little. Maybe go with a full wingtip brogue. Now that's still actually quite a formal shoe in the modern world, but at the same time, in the, in the formal shoe pantheon, the full wingtip brogue is considered to be perhaps one of the least formal of shoes. And it's got lots of texture and pattern on there. It just looks rather splendid. If that's still a little too formal for you, start wearing something like a chucker boot or uh, a Chelsea boot or even a desert boot if you want to go down to the lowest level of formality. Because these, well, they're still members of the sort of slightly more formal shoe world, but at the same time, they are less, they have less visual impact in the way that they look. Uh, and you can apply this ideology to all of your clothing. So you look at your trousers. If all of your friends are wearing, you know, baggy ass jeans, you can just wear a nice pair 
of well-cut jeans in a nice uh, sort of darker, more formal colour, like an indigo blue instead of a light blue or a stone wash, or even go for a pair of chinos. And as we move up the body, you can apply this process to everything. If they're all wearing t-shirts, you wear a polo shirt. Um, you know, if you are standing out somewhat because you tend to wear maybe a tweed sports jacket in the winter, such as I'm wearing now, take it down a notch. You know, just go for a Harrington jacket or a, uh, or a less formal blouson style jacket. Believe me, it doesn't take a great deal just to turn it down a notch or two. You're still going to look incredibly smart, but you are less formal to the eye from outside. You know, leave the suits at home, just dress in a way. And you, and you can even employ just things like changing the fabrics and the way that you're wearing. You know, if you're all your, uh, if you habitually wear a white cotton shirt or a light blue cotton shirt, just change that to a chambray shirt or a flannel shirt. I'm wearing sort of a chambray shirt now and it's got patterns on it instead of the austerity of a plain white shirt. And just by changing the, the materials and the patterns of your clothing, it turns down that volume. You become far more casual looking yet without being underdressed in any way. Now, the next thing I would suggest you can do to perhaps feel more comfortable yourself is adapt to the occasion, perhaps more so than you've been doing in the past. Because a guy who's very sartorial, who's very keen on being authentic himself, he will dress the way that he sees fit for every situation. We can change that a little, all right? If you've been invited to a casual gathering of friends, maybe a barbecue in the garden, whatever it may be, think about that situation. Think about the people who are going to attend and amend the way that you dress so that you're going to fit in a little more. Now, if this is a casual back garden thing, right? Barbecue, maybe in the autumn as it is where I am now, I'm not gonna be wearing a suit. I'm not going to be wearing a collar and tie because it really isn't gonna fit in. I'm gonna look like an outlier amongst my circle of associates because they simply don't dress like that. So I'm going to change the way I dress into a much more casual style, but I can still keep it very sartorial. You know, instead of wearing, uh, for instance, you might wear, we've talked about the footwear. You know, you can of course wear boots when you're in an outdoor situation. So definitely lean towards the desert boots and things like that. But even things like a chore jacket. Now I'm a really big fan of chore jackets. They're really, coming in in a big way. I was in Savile Row a couple of weeks ago and in the windows of all of the big tailoring houses, they're now all offering chore jackets, utility jackets, you know, this sort of uh, sort of sartorial, uh, sort of moderated workwear. It's all coming in everywhere. Get yourself a nice chore jacket and you can still jazz it up. You know, I met a gentleman in London for a chat a while ago and he had a pocket square in the pocket of his chore jacket. And it looked really splendidly sartorial. It's just those little flourishes, little touches. And other things can be employed just to look quite uh, smart as well. If you're in a grouping like that, you know, things like a barber jacket are gonna work really well. I mean, if you want to think of the ultimate casual sartorial man, I want you to picture, if you see the James Bond movies, Think of the way that Bond was pictured at the final action scenes in the movie Skyfall. He was wearing the barber beacon sort of sports jacket, wax cotton jacket, a sweater underneath, a cravat, jeans, and those Islay boots which were made by uh, Crockett and Jones, which are absolutely killer. Now that is a casual outfit, but my God was it sartorial at the same time. You can do the same, it's just about planning and thinking ahead. And the last thing I would say before I move on to the second part of your question is don't forget, although I've given you suggestions about changing to a degree, blending in with the folks you're going to be with, that doesn't mean to say you have to compromise your authenticity. Clearly, the friends that you have are your friends. They have chosen you for that vaulted position of friendship because they like you and the way that you present yourself to the world. So all we're thinking about doing is always think of your authenticity above everything else, but we're just blurring the edges a little. We're perhaps not being quite so sharply. We're adopting a lighter ideology to the way that we dress. That's all you've got to do, but maintain the authenticity above all else. 
Now, the second half of your question, if I recall, was about helping friends with style without being too pushy in the process. I've got some tips for you on that. That's pretty easy to do. Firstly, you're doing well by leading by example, right? Above all else, all you can do is dress the way that you want to. We talked about your authenticity. This is what you want to put out there. All we can hope for is that your friends, as they're operating in your orbit, they will see the way that dressing well works out for you. When you're in a group of people, in a bar, in a public place, people will obviously gravitate towards you because you're well dressed. You're the one who looks like the leader of the group, the alpha because you're the one who's taken the time to present yourself in the best possible way. People will see that. They will see that, you know, the ladies will come in your direction. They will notice that when you go into maybe uh, a restaurant or a shop, that you will be treated differently by the sales agents because they will look at the way you dress and they will make an assumption you're a person of consequence because you've taken time and effort to put some decent clothes on your back. It's as simple like this. So hopefully, by seeing you leading by example, we will hope that your associates and friends will naturally gravitate to the way that you have been showing is the right way to dress in public. So leading by example is the first step in actually you know, sharing your love of style with your friends without it appearing to be pushy because it involves you doing nothing at all, just being you. Now, the next thing that's going to happen when people see that these things are happening to you, they're going to come to you for advice because they see that you're getting this additional attention. You're getting on in the world. You're dressing like an adult whilst they're dressing like children and they're going to want help. They might come to you and say, you know, what would you suggest? I'm thinking about going to an event, an art gallery opening, the opera. How should I dress? My advice to you is to offer simple, subtle, non-judgmental suggestions to them. So if somebody is, you know, maybe trying something on, you're with them in a store, they want your advice. You can say something along the lines of, well, you know, it looks good, but perhaps instead of bright yellow, we should consider something from an earth tone, a natural color. It's autumn, it fits in. Maybe a nice brown tie with the tweed, it's going to look better than neon pink that you're, you know, you're heading towards at the moment. Little things like that. Or you can say, perhaps, you know, it looks all right, but why don't we spend a little bit more money and take it to the local tailor or seamstress and they can get it to fit you perfectly. It'll offer a better silhouette because you've got a good physique, you go to the gym, you work out, but nobody can tell because your clothes are too baggy. Let's get them tailored. You're gonna look great. Do you see what I mean? It's conversational, it's non-judgmental, it's subtle, it's giving them pointers in the right direction. You're not being pushy, you're being helpful. Now, the next thing you can do, just in conversation, you know, as I say, not being pushy, but you can highlight the benefits that fall your way because you choose to dress well. Um, because people tend to be open to doing new things when they can see a positive outcome at the end. You know, if, if nobody's gonna do anything brand new if they think there's no good reason for it. But if they can see that there's a treasure at the end of this road, they're gonna walk down that road with you. So. What I would tend to do is just offer subtle hints and say how your way of dressing is working out well for you. Things like comfort, for instance. You know, you can say that, you know, the clothing that you wear, because many people will think dressing more formally is dressing uncomfortably, but you can drop in the hints. You know, my dress shoes are so comfortable and they last for so long. The benefits of dressing well. The shirt, the chambray shirt, so lovely and silky against the skin. It's a wonderful experience. Little things like that. Um, you can also mention the fact that dressing that way gives you an inherent inner confidence because when you look good to the outside world, you feel good on the inside too. When somebody says you look like a million dollars, you tend to feel that way also. So you can project this to your friends when they say, how did you have the confidence to go up to that girl and ask her for a phone number? Well, to be honest, when you dress well, you feel pretty confident. You can just extol the virtues of being well-dressed and you can explain to them how differently a well-dressed person is often perceived. You know, when you go into a restaurant, you will be seated at the better seats maybe visible from the window because the restaurant wants good-looking, well-dressed people to be in the prime spot because it encourages other customers to come in. And if you're dressed well, 
you're the one who's going to get the good seat not the table by the gentleman's lavatories so it's all those subtle little things and if all of that fails you just want to bring in the nuclear option and talk about James Bond because for me when I'm trying to convince a gentleman about why they should dress a little better I always bring in the patron saint of the sartorial man because James Bond has been with us now what for 62 63 years he's always been considered the OG of dressing well for men he's always appropriately dressed for any situation be it casual be it formal be it the super formal and the dinner jacket drop the James Bond bomb and for sure you'll certainly get people's attention then and really you know just highlight those benefits and people will see themselves getting those benefits if they follow you down the sartorial path. Now my final tip for you when you're encouraging your friends to dress a little better is encourage gradual changes. If you're having a conversation about dressing well and perhaps somebody wants to change their style, if you suggest to them that they've got to throw their wardrobe away and start afresh and start dressing in your image, it's not going to go down well because Two things. Firstly, they will see visits to stores on the future, and no man really enjoys that. And secondly, there's the financial situation as well. It's going to be expensive. So what I would suggest is suggest gradual changes, incremental. So you can say, look, next time you're you know, ready to change your footwear, instead of buying sneakers, let's think about maybe a dress shoe or a nice boot. And by the way, you don't have to buy brand new because dress shoes and boots available on eBay, various other sites as well. You can get them for a fraction of the price of those trainers. And I can guarantee you they're going to be as comfortable and they're going to last for 10 years. So little incremental changes like that. You can suggest to them when they're, you know, getting a, a instead of buying a sweatshirt, buy a Harrington jacket. It's something which is that volume click upwards in the sartorial volume but at the same time it's a definite step up in the sartorial journey from that you know sloppy hooded uh, sweatshirt which just is shapeless and offers nothing to a gentleman in any regard be it you know clothing style or accentuating the physique little things like that offer the suggestion that maybe a pair of chinos mm. cheaper option generally more comfortable looks a little more formal but you can wear it in exactly every situation that you can wear your jeans small incremental improvements over time that's the way to take a friend on the journey to chap nirvana alongside you use your little bit more knowledge to steer ahead and show them the way to go you are a style mentor at this point and it's time to make it work for you so there we go being simple, sartorial, chatty, that's the way to go in moving people along with you. Sebastian, I hope this conversation has been helpful today and let me know if it works in the future. I'd be delighted to hear from you. Now, if you have a question for me, drop it into the comments or even better, send me an email. Email address is on the screen now, comes directly to me. I'm the only person who reads them and I'd be delighted to offer support and help if I can. Ask Uncle Ash and I'll do what I can for you. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe for more. You can support the channel by buying me a coffee or you can even become a patron. Become a part of the Chaps Guide family and benefit from the additional videos that I make every week and the daily communication which I have with the guys, my patrons, who are like members of my extended family. And you can find out how to become involved in all of that in the show notes below. So until the next time, take care steer your own path to Chap Nirvana and I'll see you again very soon.